Hello and welcome to Liptovsky Mikolash in Slovakia for the International Canoe Federation's third Slalom World Cup of the season. 390 athletes from 40 countries are competing on the VAR channel. That's the left channel for those who know. Today we're going to be watching, it's Sunday, we're going to be watching the two traditional classes, starting with the women's K1 and followed by the C2, which is, of course, the men. My guests, I'm Matthew Layton, by the way, and my guests that are joining me now are Vavra Hadileg, Olympic medalist, world champion, and last week's winner in the K1 from the Czech Republic, and Ben Haywood, K1, C2, all about his van is everywhere. He's heading off to the Pan Am Games very soon. Gentlemen, hello. Hello, well, it's coming to you live from course side. The conditions, beautiful weather conditions today. There's virtually no breeze. The poles are hanging straight, and we're looking forward to the first of the two finals. Bravo, what can you see? I mean, uh, the, the, the weather here is beautiful, and uh, yeah, I mean, the whole uh, racing so far has been really exciting, very tight margins, and uh, and all the pedals, um, you know, giving an all in, uh, into the final run, so I'm very excited to watch another final, and uh, uh, hopefully hopefully we'll see some uh, good fights. As you can see on your screen, the graphics are quite good now, 260 meters long, 3, 6, 10, 11, 18, 20, they are the upstream gate. If we look back at where the penalties have been taking place in the last couple of days, two really big sections. Gate 14 you need to watch out for, and gate 19, we had uh, 550 penalties in the last couple of days there. Ben, what are your thoughts? Yeah, there's some real make or break sections on... Uh, I'm just going to cut you off there. We're going to briefly go, and this is the World Cup standing. So after two events so far, it is Germany dominating with Funk Schuberg and Kudjela coming down. We'll keep you standing. There are five World Cups this season. We're going, we've had Prague, we've had Krakow, and now we're going into the start list of the K1. These are the 10 women who started off a couple of days ago. They went through the heats, they've been to the semi-finals this morning. So in theory, they know the course quite well. The reverse order they're going in of the way they finished the few minutes ago. Ben, I'll just cut you off, but let's talk about Jana Dukateva. Yeah, so uh, she's the only Slovakian racing, so you're gonna hear the crowd go absolutely nuts in a second. And uh, so yeah, she is, uh, probably knows this course the best out of any of the racers that are here. So uh, really interesting to see what she lays down and it's in final hall. And we just have to talk quite loudly because it's a bit of a noise in the background. It is, and it's amazing, you know, even for me, a race in, uh, in front of a, a tribune here was, uh, was absolutely crazy. So I really, uh, I really uh, wish Jana all the best and uh, she really needs the good result, you know, and uh, she's been pedaling great, but, um, but she's still missing the result this season. So let's hope that she's going to uh, hold it on and, and pull some good ones. Well, she was one of the first in the semi-finals to go, and I know I was sitting here with Robert, her coach, who was sweating right to the last minute because she just squeezed through in the last position. But how far is her run going? Uh, so far, this is looking pretty on it. She has a very relaxed paddling style, but uh, every stroke is very long, very, very powerful. And so as long as she stays on line, she's a tough one to beat, even though uh, she doesn't take as many paddle strokes as the other girls. So. And as we saw in the semi-finals, she went crucially clean. She needs to get perhaps a bit quickly there, more quickly this time. Now we're coming to the crucial section. Uh, she has to go spin and uh, yeah. I think she uh, she holds a little bit underneath the gate and uh, lost a little bit of time, but still uh, managing to keep it clean, and that, that's quite important for the final. And at a spin uh, and going into uh, second to last upstream. Now you really have to uh, keep the ball flowing into the eddy and, and the breakout. Is, uh, well, potentially this is quick. The fastest time in the semi-final was 102.22. That is really good time. It's the fastest running time. We had a 102 before, uh, the clean running time of uh, Ricardo Fang and Melanie Pfeiffer, so now it's a good time. Yeah, that, that's definitely going to be hard to beat. Well, so far, Jana Dukatova is one of three competitors in this final who has made it to the last two finals. The others are uh, Ashley Craighead and Ricardo Funk. Well, that's a bit of excitement to, uh, to start off today. And like you said yesterday, uh, when you were going down, Vavra, for us in the commentary box, it's exciting. For you, it must have been interesting. Yeah, it is, it is amazing, you know, and I really like the racing in, in front of a big crowd and uh, 
coming here in the shoot uh, around gate 9, 10 was, uh, was intense and I really enjoyed it and I appreciate the, the support from the crowd. Well, she's topped the World uh, Cup rankings in 2012, I believe. It's Osha Kragel, the only Slovenian athlete to make it to the final, which is often a surprise. Yeah, Osha is a really, really uh, technical paddler. And, uh, yeah, uh, we'll see how she goes. Uh, Jana. <laughs> throw down really good results, so really good time, so she'll uh, have her hard work to do, but I think Jana wasn't really uh, good at the, the first section, so uh, this, is, this could be a, a place where Ursha can make some, up, make some time up. Well, as you've correctly predicted, she's 1.29 seconds up at this stage. There's a few real make or break sections. One is the skate 9 10 sequence that we're seeing right now. What the water's doing and how you react to it really can make or lose so much time. And then also, again, in the gate 14 15 section. Well, right, as we see on the screen, she's been given a two second penalty on gate 10. That was a pretty good spin on uh, the gate 14. But as we've seen in the midsection, even with a penalty, she's lost two seconds. So she uh, needs to do something electrifying. Uh, form, not, not wonderful so far. She came ninth in Krakow and tenth in, in Prague, or the other way around, rather. But so, so making finals is easily uh, on the podium is a bit of a challenge at the moment. That was a really nice uh, breakout. And uh, yeah, coming to the finish line, he, she was opting the right line. That means really tight exit from the last upstream. Well, as you can see on your screen, it's nearly three seconds back. But compared to the times in the in the semi-final, it's an improvement. So I guess that's uh, with all the extra pressure. This uh, is supposed to be the gate where she had the penalty. And I'm pretty sure uh, it will be reviewed by the video judge. It might be a slight touch on the exit by the back of her life jacket. We'll even see. even if there's a two-second penalty that comes off, she still wouldn't be leading. But still pretty good time, 101.98. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, so far we have uh, really fast times. Melanie Pfeiffer, who had a, a few minutes to sweat out in the semi-finals because she was given a 50-second penalty, but then on appeal it came off. That was nice coming into the upstream and pretty quick. Now she has to uh, concentrate on the straight paddling. That's one place where the Germans tend to be always very strong is, is very fast straight line paddlers. And so you can see uh, well, we got three Germans in the final and I think all of them are going to make quite a bit of time in this first section. Well, it's even as we speak. Now this is the place where uh, where the times. Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I think uh, she got hold there in the eighty. Uh, she, I think she might have uh, lost there quite a lot of time coming way uh, too slow into the into the eighty and wasn't able to uh, pan off the wall quickly. As you can see, she's five seconds off the pace at the moment. Melanie has been a uh, She's been paddling very nice. She's a, she's a technical paddler. She also has a yes, band set of German power. This won't be enough though. Right, not today. Remember, she is a medalist from the so she's a fun, current world championship medalist, but she's 5.59 down. So it looks like uh, Jana Dukatova set a, a daunting task for the others to follow in. Uh, it seemed like most of the time she lost there was in that gate 10 combination. It's so important for you to, for you to hold the inside pole there. And you can, uh, I don't know if we'll see another shot of it, but her stern was just caught on the on the wall of the riverbank and, uh, and just, yeah, lost several seconds there. 
we saw Jana and uh, Urshak Rage, and I think Jana was uh, very, very happy about um, her result. And uh, she put down really good, really good times. So well, we'll Ricarda Funk, uh, she was a bit nervous in the first section of her semi-final, but she has the form, and she certainly knows how to perform under pressure. She was last week a third in Prague, fourth. She's really smooth battler, and, and now we see that German powerhouse. Um, yeah, she can be really, really fast. She's just looking that so light on the water. Incredibly, incre incredibly fast breakouts, and uh, I think there was a bit of a fraction of a second lost at the top, but it, she made it all up on the flat water stretch, and now she's uh, she's up on the split. For that little bit, um, being lost a little bit of time in, in gate number 10, but super smooth up 11, came straight out of the upstream. Well, she's come back a little bit, but she was faster the last section last time. She's not going to receive any support from the crowd, by the way. But still pretty good run, I reckon. Nice spin. Now it's important to hold it in the inside pool, and uh, this is quite a tricky exit. Coming back to the diagonal stopper. Well, the time to clearly go for us 1 0 1. That's not going to happen. Well, provisionally in third place, but there's some top, top athletes yet to come. 29 degrees, bright sunshine. <laughs> And with the camera angles, we can see the course, we can see uh, a few people sunbathing, but there must be two or 3,000 uh, people on this side of the stand, which you, uh, you can don't see, but you can certainly hear. Uh, it's awesome to see uh, people come in. You know, it's always like uh, Liptovsky Mikulash. It's, uh, it's not the biggest town, but uh, Wildwater Skyking has, uh, has the, the sound here and the name, and, and people are used to come and watch uh, the racing here. And uh, yeah, it's, it gives uh, a lot of excitement to the the event, so we're yeah. happy that we have these people here. Where's the older sister? It's Alexander Perova from Russia coming down now. Of course, has a sister, Ekaterina. So a little bit of a wobble trying to cross the current there, but she's pulled it off and and uh, yeah, it looks like she's still in touch with it now. Well, she not saying she knows this setup, but she earlier in the season in 2015 she came fifth in a world ranking event here, so she certainly knows the water. The yeah, Russian team has always, uh, well not always, but very often uh, selection races here in the spring. So uh, so they certainly know the course well and uh, we'll see how, how uh, Sasha will uh, manage to... Looked like there was a slight paddle touch on the inside pole of six and she's lost some time on the cross here. So she's going to need to do something spectacular to, to make up that time. Another touch, looks like it on the outside pole of gate 11. Looks like she's fighting with it. It's not really smooth and uh, yeah, you know, that's what happens. And you, once, once you're in the final, you want to give all into it, the run. And she had quite a nice 14-15 spin, but I don't think it's going to be enough to really get in touch with the podium. Ben, you have some experience of chasing the clock. How, yeah. do you, uh, how, how do you handle it? Yeah, so I, I'm still uh, trying to perfect my race strategy, but I, I tend to go for a bit more risk, especially in, in races like the final, because really, why not? It's uh, so much can be gained by taking an aggressive line, and, and uh, I, I think it suits my paddling style a little bit as well. I certainly don't paddle like Jana Dukatova, but then again, we can see it's working very well for her. Well, uh, Alexander Perov, uh, made the final which is a, a, a tremendous achievement with the if you look at the girls who haven't made it but only provisionally in fifth place and there's a very happy Yana Dukatova at the moment but we have uh, Mylin uh, Shuo European champion won last week in her only uh, World Cup outing so far this season so it's going to be a frightening proposition. Mylin is on a, on a very good form and, and 
one of the qualification runs in uh, in Krakow, she she was her time was absolutely stunning. So uh, once uh, once she's on the on a good line, it's probably one of the fastest girls on the on the, on the circuit. We saw a little contact with the with the rock there. You know the water is quite low here. It's, uh, it's been quite dry season here, so uh, we're struggling a little bit with that. But still, <laughs> there's a the water to paddle on. So uh, yeah, incredibly powerful paddler. She's one of the only women on the circuit that can be competitive with most of the men. Her uh, yeah, the qualification run in in Krakow certainly beat my own time. So we saw a touch on the. On the gate number one, which is not really usually, but yesterday actually in my uh, in my one of my runs, uh, yeah, there's you know there's a bubble which sometimes pulls you on a on a on a gate, so it's, it seems like a very easy gate, but actually you have to be careful. And the first split time still in touch. Now we. S can compare on the second split time she's losing a bit that just proves how how Yana was incredibly fast in this section well if she keeps neutral to the other she'd be provisionally just in third position you can see that She's one of those who are using uh, uh, fins on, the, on, the, on their kayaks. Last, last two seasons has been uh, a trendy to, to do so. It'd so. be interesting to know how that contact with the rock at the start of her run affected the fins, if they are actually still on, intact on the bottom of her boat. I think she just now uh, tried to check if it's on. But. As we noticed yesterday, quite a few of the athletes have uh, had uh, broken fins and battered fins. You know, as I said, it, like. Now we can see what's there touch. So it must be very close. Well, if the touch, so far there's no appeal, but if the touch came off, that would put her into second place. So Jana Dukateva, after six competitors down, is still looking pretty. Jess Fox yesterday, it looked like she won the C1, but unfortunately for Jess, on gate number 19, the head went through, but the boat didn't. Well. I won't be commenting on that. I didn't see it. Um. I spent 15 minutes with the judges this morning looking over the slow motion and the fix thing. So anyway, that's history now. She really wants that result. And uh, I mean, she's she's awesome peddler. And yeah. World champion from last year's in Deep Creek. In both disciplines, kayak and C1. Looks yeah, like a great run so yeah, far. It she's is, uh, it's technically on it, pulling very hard, and 1.37 one, uh, one, uh, seconds up on the clock. Good speed into the cross. Very good. Very good. Uh, yeah, that's good. That's good. A little bit of time in gate 11 there, but if she pulls off a good 14 15, she's still in touch for a gold medal. Well, it's tight. She's only 1.64. No, oh, that's not that good. is a very big mistake. Not on the touch, but um, she lost uh, a bit of the time there. Oh, we see a 50-second penalty. That looks like she crossed the, the the gate line, actually in the opposite direction that it's supposed to be done. So that happened twice yesterday. In that gate 14 where she had her problem, it's uh, a whirlpool that you're trying to work with, but there's also some topography of the water where you actually have to paddle uphill on the exit, so it's a very complicated move to try and get right, and that's uh, it's a shame it didn't go her way. Well, even if the 50 would come off, it wouldn't affect the leader so far. Next to go is the 2009 world champion Yasmin Schomburg, who won in.
Prague and just, just missed out of the final last week in Krakow. Just mean uh, missed on uh, making a, a team for the this year uh, World Championship, so she's on the racing in the World Cups and um, yeah, we all were happy for her to win the World Cup in Prague. She's awesome paddler and good to see her going fast. She recently changed the boat. She's been paddling a, a new model. You can see this new model is maybe a little harder in the turns, but when you get it on the straightaways, it's faster than most of the boats out there. Even on the split. So she does in this crucial section right here. This is a decent exit and very looking nice. great so far. Yeah. Well, she's fallen off a little bit. 1.91 seconds off the pace. See how this, how the second spin on the course goes. Might be able to claw a little bit of time back here with uh, the good last two gates. Oh, she controlled that that jump into the diagonal stopper. Very nice. This is looking great. This, this is, is uh, going to be interesting. It's not going to be enough for for no. Yana. Third place is 104.42. Moves into third place. The big cheer is that we know that Jana Dukatova now has a medal. Just a matter of which color. That's what I was talking about. Uh, Jana needed that result and it will uh, make a big confidence for the rest of her season. And Good to see her back on the podium. Long time former world number one, of course, who has won, was it in Prague? She won the 2000-2006 World Championships. Marta Martinez to come up. Last week she made the final and came ninth. She's another very strong competitor from Spain. Haven't seen her on the podium as much, but she's uh, she's definitely uh, has the ability to do it. And uh, yeah, it's just a matter of time before she kind of gets that that perfect run. So we'll sh see if she lays that down today. I think uh, as Spanish competitors can uh, take the advantage of uh, having a very similar course uh, in, uh, in La Seu de Ur Urkel, which was designed by the Andre Tsibak, same as, as the course in Lipovsky Mikulaj. So, you know, the, the futures can be uh, similar, so uh, they, can, they can use that. And we see uh, the two, uh, two of them in the finals. So. I think, yeah, the penalty will be regretted because otherwise it's a, it's a very solid run. Her gate 11 was great. It was uh, one of the best I've seen out there. And this 14 move is still in touch, but yeah, there was just a slight touch on the inside pole of gate 6, which uh, may be the end of this run, but yeah, we'll see how it goes. Very, very nice. A little quick spin into the upstream. Nicely controlled. Nice uh, real sprint to the line. Oh. 101. I think she got hold on on the rock a little bit there, but great run otherwise. Well, moves into second position. So everyone's happy. The local crowd are happy because their girls protected. Jana Dukatova now is guaranteed a silver medal. It's great. Marta Martinez will also have a medal, and I think she can be very, very happy with that. Well, it's all down now to 23-year-old Estelle Magnin from France. I believe this is her first World Cup final. Last week she was 19th in 2014. She came 31st in Prague. 
So it's uh, it's all to go for. It must hopefully she can channel positive emotions and give it a, a good try. I guess there's no pressure in a way. Yeah, it's great to see her doing so well in, in her first World Cups. And, uh, and uh, yeah, I, I was training a little bit with her in, in Poe this last offseason, and she's a very, very powerful paddler there. A little bit of a mistake in gate two, um, but uh, it's probably only a fraction of a second. There's still a lot more run where she can make that time back up. The top section is not actually the section where it's really important. I mean, you have to keep it going without any major mistakes, but still uh, we have two spins down at the bottom, which uh, and the, there's, there's two breakouts at 10 and 11 where the time can see uh, she's still in touch coming from France she has to be a strong paddler a little low into gate 10 but see how she can do in gate 11 which is so important not the fastest line she's going to be a little down on the split here Well, that's uh, 2.95 seconds off, and the crowd is starting to warm up because of the, it looks like Yannick Utsova is going to win. Yeah, even with a p perfect bottom section, it's going to be very difficult to, to try and get that first place. But she's, definitely, she's still in the running for a medal, for sure. Well, third position would be 183.98. The whole little bit on the stopper. That's what it's all about. Yannick Kutova. Awesome. Awesome race. We, um, we just received information that Maya Lentra, uh, a touch was taken off, so uh, she went into the second place. Well, Dropping Marta Martinez, her Spanish uh, colleague, into third, and was uh, off the podium. Well, these things, uh, these things happen, but it's uh, it's a great result for the locals. I mean, Iana, Iana, you know, it's it's great for her, it's great for the sport, and uh, even uh, even Mayalen and Marta Martinez. Uh, yeah, maybe actually I was talking about it before. The course uh, designer on its back, uh, the same as in Lasso de Urgo, where they train every day. So we'll see how that pans out. If that is the case, the next World Cup, which is in early August, is in Lasso de Urgo. So it'll be interesting to see how they, the girls go through the summer break and work it out from there. Well, we've been listening to Barbara Hadelek, who won. So yesterday was only second. Uh, the day last week he was one, but obviously a huge crowd. And it's going to break off and show you the results. Gold, Jana Dukatova, Slovakia, Mylin Shuro and Marta Martinez take up the rest of the medals, both for Spain. It's a really good final. You can see uh, not too many penalties third out, so you have to be fast. And we're just going to quickly have a, a glance at the updated World Cup standings as we see Jana Dukatova has taken over the top from Ricardo Fung and Yasmin Schoenberg in third place. So well done, Jana Dukatova. It's a, a certainly a winning weekend. It will keep you up on the World Cup standings for the next two World Cup events. The final, obviously, is going to be in Po in a, a month and a half so's time. Is that uh, your brief, your thoughts on the on the race? Uh, yeah, I reckon, uh, as we said, not many penalties. Uh, yesterday we saw in the men K1, there was no penalty at all, and we only saw uh, uh, four touches at all. In, uh, in the women's final, so uh. and you Ben, I think there's there's so much to be said for having just a technically perfect run on this course. I mean, uh, you saw what uh, Matthew Biazzo did uh, the other day. It was just this flawless run, and we saw something very similar from Jan Dukatova today. It was uh, nothing super crazy, but there were there's hardly any mistakes made, and and that's really what it takes to win here. Well, the action goes on quick and fast. We're going to let Vavra go now. Uh, she's got lots of hands to shake and to keep people happy. Thanks so much for coming in. You're always welcome, as you know, and a, a great entertainer, a great star. And we're going to, Ben and I are going to continue on the action uh, 
Ben, while well, we've got a couple of seconds break until we have another subject, talk about your, your van project. And thanks for having me here and, uh, and keep watching Wide World Park and Slalom. Thank you. Thanks, Ben. Thanks. <laughs> Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, just I, I guess about the van project is, yeah, it's, it's been uh, kind of evolving since last year. I, I think last time I was on commentating, I was still in the crowdfunding stage for it. But now, uh, yeah, everything's been kind of outfitted. I've moved in full time and it's, uh, yeah, it's been pretty cool to just be able to have a slalom course in my backyard. And you're getting on to the Pan Am Games. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to actually leave the van with Valvra. I'm um, uh, going to drive it to Prague tomorrow and then uh, head it back to Canada. So it's going to stay with him for a month and then I'll, I'll come pick it up and then drive to Liceo for the uh, next World Cup. Well, that's great stuff. And your, uh, your experience in the C2, you, you said you had a bit of a bit stiffness last week, so you didn't actually enter? Uh, yeah, so... Uh, uh, neither of uh, my partner and I were really uh, feeling that great after the World Cup. I was having some shoulder issues, and uh, uh, my partner was having some back issues. So we uh, we decided to scrap the race. But yeah, uh, we're seeing the start list come up for. Uh, the we're seeing the issue. World Cup standings. Oh. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Man. <laughs> it could be the same there because most of them in the final. It's yeah. the World Cup standings after uh, the first two World Cups. You see Casper Sindler leading it, Berling Becker also up there. We'll keep you updated during the uh, the racing. Who's doing what? And like you said, now you can introduce the, uh, the, the the top 10 yeah, the sure. so I think uh, some of the main ones to walk, uh, watch out for is we've got two Slovakian boats in the final both of them know this course like the back of their hand uh, also one I'd, I'd recommend looking out for is Florence Hounslow they had uh, a very interesting line in gate 11 where they were only the only see two teams to actually go around the far side of the gate and do it as an S turn. So it'll be interesting to see if they opt for that again and try to refine it a bit more or whether they go for a classical move and then we'll see uh, potentially a, a time difference from uh, from their semi-final run. If you're watching the semi-finals and you're thinking, oh, it's changed a little bit, that's because the Hochschorners were initially out. They were put in 13th position, but after a lot of uh, close looking at gate five, I believe it was, a penalty came off and now they're coming to the top five time so there's going to be a few surprised very delighted uh, fans here to see the legends the Hochschorners and obviously the cousins the uh, Scantars so it's a really interesting proposition France normally managed to throw at least two teams in the final and they've done it again they have six or seven teams that uh, can compete at this level and it's Skiamenko and Cajol yeah, it's great to see these guys uh, just making it in. They're uh, incredibly powerful. Had a, f a few mistakes in the semi-final, but yeah, with a with a top run, they're definitely going to be in in uh, contention for a medal here. And the challenge is clearly there's obviously two in a boat. But what need pointers out the the main challenges here for these C2s? So uh, one thing to notice uh, with these guys is uh, there's either a, a left-right combo or a right-left combo, and that means the, the guy in the back is either paddling on the right or the left. Uh, the, the sternman has a lot of the turning control while the front person has a lot of the power. And so we're seeing uh, we have a left-right combo here with these guys, which uh, what that uh, is going to make easier is the gate 18-19 combination and also moves like gate 11 where they can uh, the sternman can really hold the boat around the inside pole there. This is a move that's going to be easier for the other way of uh, uh, the other combination of paddlers, where you have a right-left C2. Uh, so what we're going to see is some variability on the split times, where uh, in, in the differences between the, which sides the paddlers are paddling on, uh, they're going to accelerate, uh, lose and gain time at different points in the course. Well, so far they seem to be certainly clean. They're looking good. Yeah, Fred's this is a decent up. spin. I think the spin is uh, looked like the fastest option. A lot of the C2s were going for what's called a bogey, where you go up and around the gate 14. Um, but yeah, it looks like the spin was fractionally faster, and I think we're going to see most C2 teams opting for that. Well, the time to beat, the pure time to beat the fastest in the semi-final was a staggeringly quick 1.02. This is looking like a great run. Well, come over in 104.45. If that was the semi-final, I believe that would have put them into the second fastest time with yeah. the penalties. So it's, it's really promising. It, sometimes you can look at the women's time and the C2 time and they can often be pretty similar when you go into a final. But uh, because this t course is so tight with so many... Uh, 
um, wraparound moves and, and spin options, uh, we may see the C2s just a little bit slower. So uh, this run this run time definitely could hold. Well, we saw Yana Dukatev in 101.01, so that's three seconds faster at the stage. Who's next to go? They seem to be well known. It's Florence and Hounslow, 2013 world champions, silver medalists from the London Olympic Games, and so far haven't managed to put it together in the finals in the World Cup this year. These guys are incredibly strong tatherers. Yeah, you're right. Uh, no podium so far, but. Uh uh, yeah, they uh, they paddle extremely well on the London course. It's going to be interesting to see what they do at World Championships. But uh, so far the run's looking great. They had a bit of a rock touch in Gate 2, but really there's so much momentum in a C2 that really didn't slow them down that much. Their right-left combo, which means this Gate 6 is easier for them, and also the Gate 9's, uh, 9 10 section is going to be a lot easier on their side. Well, they're in touch. They're 0.8 seconds down at the first split. Now these two again, clearly they double, here, double up weekend in, weekend out. Yeah, they are going for the far line again. This is an uh, interesting line. They are the only C2 to, team to try this, but it looks like it, it is a fast line. Uh, that was that's pretty well executed. A little bit of hesitation around the outside of gate 11, but um, yeah, and then they're going for the, the bogey around 14. Well, they've taken back two tenths a second, but this, as you see, they're still six tenths down. The boat is running, though. It's like uh, we'll we'll have to see what these last few gates hold out for. But um, yeah, this is uh, a reasonably well put together run. Last two gates to go. The reference time, as we saw, was 104. It's going to be close. Well, 1.44 outside, so they they lost some time, or the other team made up some time in the last uh, last few gates. Yeah, uh, it'd be interesting to see what the split times are around that 14 of whether the going above the gate saves a bit of time for a, a crew with their paddling style, or or whether the spin actually would be faster. But um, I think where the time was really lost was just in that little bit of hesitation around the outside of gate 11. Well, Berling, Becker, they have form on their side. They came second last weekend. They won the Europeans. These so guys are incredibly powerful team. We're going to see them make a bit of time in that flat water stretch between gate three and four. Well, they need to do it because they're the only German teams in the final. Got a left-right combo, which means this next section is going to be harder for them, but then the bottom will be easier. Well, still very much in touch. A third of a second back. This is well executed so far. They're flat and controlled, tight on the inside pole of 10. This is definitely in touch. A little bit of time in gate 11. And then this is the real make or break course for C2s. It's how they execute on gate 14. Well, it's still within it, half a second off the pace. What this team can do is go direct in gate 18 and then spin 19 while you saw um, Florence and Hounslow, they had to spin both gates. I think some time will be made here. Uh, that was reasonably well executed, and, and it will be close on uh, on the French team. Well, as I mentioned, 104.45 is time to go. It's going to be really close, this. Just under, wow, that is uh, incredibly tight. So, after three teams gone, they've just taken over the top spot. As I mentioned, they are one of the form teams at the moment. It's... Uh, going to be rather difficult to make ourselves heard, I believe, for the next two or three minutes. 
Uh, briefly tell us about the legend of the Hawks Runners. Yeah, so uh, they they are an absolute legend in the sport. They've got uh, three Olympic gold medals to their name, and uh, I believe an Olympic bronze as well. And uh, yeah, there's real really no C2 team that uh, that uh, has has been able to touch them for most of their paddling career. Well, last last year we saw a couple of uh, dropping out of different events, but let's see how they go. They're based in Bratislava, so they don't, talk, don't run on this course every day, but clearly they know it well. They're one of the most precise teams on the circuit, and as we saw with uh, Yana Dukatova, that's what it takes to win. So uh, I think we've got a definite medal possibility here. They're looking fantastic. They're powerful, technically online. Very fast so far. I think we can expect them to be up on the split. Well, as you mentioned, a fifth of a second up on the split. And the crowd, this is where it really starts to come in their ears. You can see they're going to make a little bit of time here because this is on their easier side. They're holding that inside pole perfectly. This is the best we've seen so far. Yeah, I think with that gate 10, we're going to see even more gain on the split time coming up. Yeah, and this is a beautifully executed spin. This is uh, this is going to take it if they can hold it together in these bottom two gates. Well, as we saw, the 1.6 seconds up, it's theirs to lose. Now that was a very difficult move for their their paddle combination. That was uh, not on their turning side, but they pulled it off beautifully. One more gate to go, and then it's just a sprint for the line. A little tight on the inside pole, but this is still going to take the lead. Well, the crowd are happy. They certainly know how to put on the occasion, don't they? At the end of the, at the, end of the C2 semi-finals, for a good 25 minutes, they were out. Appeal came back in again, it looks like they... They've certainly put down a time to beat, 102.63. Yeah. yeah, I think uh, there's, there's going to be few, very few people who can pull, put down a, a technically perfect run like that. Uh, I think the Scantars may be one of the only ones who can do it because uh, really like this, this course, they're, they're paddling it like, uh, like they could do it with their eyes closed. Well, the action continues. It's Stepensky and Pukwila who just missed out on the finals last week, but they again a very stylish crew. Yeah, they're they're again uh, have a very attacking paddling style. They're they're technically brilliant as well, and so uh, we can see them. We're going to see them pulling hard very uh, right now into that gate four. We're going to see the water spring off the boat, and. Uh, and that time, uh, it, it can definitely be made. It's, uh, it's a different style to the Hogshorners, but it's, it's, it's uh, very valid. Well, there's not a sigh in the crowd. That's not going to give them any encouragement. Let's see where they are on the split. Well, they're very much in touch. Point two, two down. Yeah. This, this move is going to be a little easier for them. and. We'll see how close they can hold that inside pole of 10. You can see the Hawkshorner just made tons of time there. And these guys are in touch. Good paddling through 11. And then uh, 14 is going to be make or break. It's like dropping for the spin, and that was well executed. Still half a second off the pace. This move is so tricky for C2s because you can see their stern sc scraping just against the wall. There's nothing you can do to avoid that. It's just how long the boats are compared to where the wall is. But uh, you just got to kind of ignore that, get the boat back online, and they did a beautiful job of that. See if this can challenge. It's going to be close. Just outside. Well, 1.48 seconds off the pace. So, so far, five competitors gone, and Hochshorners are in the lead.
next is another on-form team. In fact, they're number one in the world as we speak. They yeah. are the winners of Prague. Uh, didn't quite make it through to the final last week. We're talking, of course, of 27-year-olds Gautier Klaus and Matthew Pesch, or Peshier, as I should pronounce it. These, uh, these paddlers are incredibly strong as well. One thing uh, they're absolutely brilliant on are, are the upstream gates and the breakouts. They're, uh, it's, they're very few teams that can get as tight and as close and then get synced back up on the exit as these guys can. It's, uh, it, yeah, there's, there's certain gates out there that it's, uh, yeah, just kind of seems impossible how they do it. Well, I'll tell you why they do it. They've been paddling together for 14 years. Yeah, it, it's, uh, you can see how, how in tune they are with each other. It's, uh, it's really, they're always in sync. They're, um, they always know where the other person is, and uh, that's uh, really impressive to see in a C2 team. Well, they're up on the split. Quarter of a second up. It's a fantastic run so far. We'll see how they can do in this, this crux move of gate 10. Holding it well. This is oh, that was beautifully done. French fans trying to make themselves heard. It's a dangerous combination. They're going to be up on the split here. I think that that was uh, beautifully executed. Uh, Ten and eleven, well, just outside actually, but uh, just a good spin here, and we'll see how it how the bottom goes for them. Well, as we saw, they dropped back a little bit, a third of a second off the pace. What are you seeing then? They're uh, they're coming a little wide into the last gate, but that can actually help them for the exit to the finish line. And so we're, we're, it's all going to be down to this sprint right here. Well, that keeps the local crowd happy yeah. because we've just had a Slovakian team have been confirmed so far leading the actual ball. We're just going to break off one second from the actual event. About 20 minutes ago, we saw a young Slovakian lady who won. Are you happy? Terribly happy. Siana Dukatova coming to you live. Yeah, I didn't expect her to win today. It was pretty tough uh, progressing from the heats, uh, from the semi final to the final. and. Uh, finally, I did a pretty good time in, the, in, in my final run, so it's awesome. Well, you gave Robert, your coach, a few grey hairs. He was watching from here in the semi-final, and he looked a bit nervous. And then you, you were first to go, and you kept it up well. Yeah, I was pretty nervous too when I was in the semi-finals, but uh, finally it was enough for 10 plays, and I got a, got a chance to have another run in the final, and I think I did it good. Thank you. We'll let you go. Thanks for coming in briefly, and we'll watch the others. Back to you, Ben. All right, yeah, so uh, last run from the French team is uh, was absolutely stellar. It's hard to, uh, to lay down a, a technically good run like that, but uh, if anyone else can do it, it's this team paddling right now. They have a touch, uh, or a, actually uh, that may have just been a water touch in, in gate, gate three. So um, we'll see where they are in the split here. Well, certainly a bit of noise coming down, and then in the pace, a quarter of a second off. Yeah, absolutely in touch. So, uh, so much of uh, this course for C2 is just how well you can execute this gate 10 11. You can see Klaus Tesch did it beautifully, the Hog Corners did it beautifully. We'll see if these guys can do the same thing, and it's looking great so far. Again, another team based, team based in Bratislava, but they certainly know this course. Well, a little bit back, the one and a half seconds off. Yeah, and they're opting for the line above the gate, 14, so see if they can claw back any time with a well-executed version of that. Doing a double spin. I'm not sure if this will challenge for a medal. Time to go for the third place is 104.11. Looks like they're going to struggle and make that, yeah. Yeah, you can see that was a beautiful run at the top, but then it, it fell apart from them at the bottom. Three competitors to go. Hochschorners. Pavel and Peter, the twins. Pavel sits in the front. And now a team, another team from Poland. 
What do you know about these, Ben? Uh, so, uh, it, yeah, the team coming up are, are very powerful. Uh, the, uh, the Polish C2 teams are, are traditionally very, very strong. Um, yeah, I, I know our, our Canadian coach is uh, Olympic silver medalist, uh, race for Poland, uh, the 2000 Olympics. And, uh, and yeah, uh, it, since him, the, the Polish C2 team has, has been very strong with their coaching, support, and development. And, and these guys have, uh, have shown how well they can take on the competition. Well, they're both 21 years old. In fact, they won the gold medal a little bit earlier in the season in the under-23 Worlds in Foz in Brazil. Seems like they might be a little back here and a touch we're seeing on gate three. But uh, there's always so much time to gain in these, these next two gates here. Looks like they're coming in nice and controlled. Good push off the wall. Little bit of time on the exit there. That wasn't super fast like we saw with uh, Klaus Tesch and the Hawkshorners. But uh, good gate 11. And let's see if they can make any more time back in this, this crucial bottom section. Oh, well, another two second penalty because they were doing well. They'd absorb the penalty, but that's four seconds. It's getting yeah. tough. That's impressive to be able to claw back a two second penalty, especially with racing this tight. But uh, yeah, it looks like that gate 14 kind of sealed their fate. This is well executed into the bottom. Good run around and then sprint to the bottom, but I don't think that's going to be in the medals. Well, moving to provisional eighth place. Two teams to go. The Hockshawners have a medal. Uh, I don't know them that well personally, but I would expect they only want one color medal. Yeah. That's uh, that's definitely where it's at. It's uh, yeah, I've seen them pretty disappointed before at the bottom of a race run when they uh, when they have to settle for silver. So, well, so far the script is working out fine. We have uh, Jana Dukatova who came and joined us a couple of minutes ago. She won the K1 women, followed by uh, the Spanish uh, Shura Martinez, who perhaps have local knowledge because, as uh, Vavra pointed out a few minutes ago, both courses designed by the same chap. This Camporesi and Ferrari, they have. Olympic experience. They came sixth in the final last weekend. Yeah, these guys are fantastic. They're uh, they're technically very strong. Um, they're physically very fit. It's uh, and it's uh, they had a stellar run in the semifinals. Be interesting to see if they can take on the home Hogshorners in the home country. But uh, yeah, so far it's looking very solid. A little bit of time in the exit of six, but uh, yeah, for C2s, uh, the time is, is going to be made or break in, uh, from here down. So a nice approach in, nice tight exit. This is well executed so far. Looks like they're picking up a touch in gate 11, which is uh, definitely going to be difficult for them to make back up. Well, as you can see, they're now 4.21 seconds. The third position was only one point, one and a half seconds back from the top, so they're really going to be struggling to do anything. However, yeah. making the final in this level out of the teams that started is an amazing feat. Size. So as, as Hard stern hit on the water, but they did an amazing job of pulling it back and dealing with that uh, that contact with the wall. I'm sure we'll see the, both of the penalties that they've uh, incurred go to review because I know both of them were extremely light. And we're seeing another one come off on 18, which is what's taking them out. And they're they're surprised on uh, the number of touches that they have. If all penalties come off it wouldn't affect the first place though which i suppose is yeah the, that's correct but uh we'll figure out how far that would bump them up but take off six it would put them into fifth position yeah so it's not going to affect this uh Kalofsky, Jane, again 
then they know how to perform. Second in Prague, ninth in Krakow, and the last to go. So we know that Klaus Pesch have a medal. Hochschulners have a medal. Watching these guys in Prague was unbelievable. They're so powerful, so in tune with the water and in tune with each other. And so I know that the Czechs do a lot of paddling here. I mean, their 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 country is uh, right next door. So uh, I'm sure these guys have done many many races on the Toski. Already got a two second penalty. So it's like they're already starting at a disadvantage. But these uh, if anyone can challenge for the medals, I think these guys are 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 paddling super strong this season and uh and yeah it'll be interesting to see what they can pull out well they're known to put on a show very aggressive let's see how they can perform on the first split well 2.35 so it's going to be a lot of work It's a very difficult move on, on their side, but uh, they have a nice tight exit out of gate 10. Looks like gate 11 is near perfect. Good wrap around. This is solid. It's just going to see if they can claw back that two second penalty. Well, 1.85, they're certainly doing well. Getting really good su support from the local crowd. Stern touch on the wall, but they're clawing it back. That's impressive paddling right there. I don't know if this will challenge for uh, the top top two, but uh, they could get a bronze if they hold this together. 102 is the top time. 10411 is the third time. Oh, it just missed out. That was an amazing run. Well, the big cheering, to be fair, is not for them, it's for the Hochschorners. They've taken a victory in their home country. The Czech team just laid down the fastest running time of the day, which is very, very impressive. That was uh, a beautiful run, and it's such a shame about their touch. I, I'm uh, not sure if that'll go to review or not, but uh, they, they should feel uh, very proud of themselves for having such a technically perfect run. Yeah, I that that one is definitely going to go to review. Uh, to, to me, that kind of looks a bit like a water touch, but um, uh, really, that's going to be left up to the ICF judges. Keeps it interesting, I suppose. The reason it keeps it interesting, if hypothetically it does go to review and it is shown not to be a penalty, that is going to put them into gold medal. So this is going to be an interesting one to watch. But we have no indication. How does it actually? The pers who pers who claims and how does it work? So. Uh, each team gets a, a certain number of inquiries. Um, uh, like regardless, this is going to go to the video judge who can overturn uh, the judges on the water. Uh, but I'm sure the the Czech team is in there right now, uh, like uh, making sure that everyone on the riverbanks being talked to. They're going to be reviewing the video feed. Uh, we should see a star come up beside their name pretty soon, and then uh, within five minutes, we're going to be able to to say for sure uh, whether that penalty is going to hold. Well. World Cup standings, as we see after three events, it's Klaus Pisch, Karlowski, Jane, Berling, Becker. So far we've seen no penalties, so it looks like the Hochschorners have given the given. I'll just check. Well, this has been a cracking weekend, and today it's been Jana Dukatova who's won the K1 women. The Hochschorners won the K1 men. Ben, you enjoyed yourself? Yes, it's uh, been a fantastic weekend. Uh, yeah, last time I was here was 10 years ago, and it's uh, been pretty impressive to see all the course upgrades with this massive new grandstands. And I'd never paddled the the left side channel before, so it's uh, yeah, it's been a, a, a really fun week. I'm Matthew Layton. Thanks to all the guests. Thanks for joining us. You can follow us on YouTube. You can follow me on Twitter, on Facebook, on all the ways. We're going forward and have a little bit of a break now for the Stalin World Cup. Join us in La Sodegel and Po. And then clearly we have the London World Championships coming up in September. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. And keep active, please. Thanks, Ben. All right. Thanks, Ben.